Hey, hey, you're back in the garage with Easy Jeezy. I don't know whether to use this video for the start or the end, but Rusty's back on the road again, and what an adventure it was. And let's see. Hey, I don't see any big puddles of oil under it, so I think we should start this adventure by going and getting a burrito. And, uh,. That's what we're gonna Tito's do. Tito's Mexican Grill. That's my new favorite place to get a breakfast burrito. And the people in there are so fun. And the lady who works there, we were just, she was just telling me about, yeah, when I was a little girl, we used to play slug bug. I remember, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, a universal thing there, you know, playing slug bug. Everybody's done slug bug or had to wrestle with their kids for doing slug bug and it's I don't know where that started but it, it seems like a universal thing because they were just so you know popular at different times and crazy but what a conversation starter this it's just so fun to have one of these Volkswagens we're gonna call this clutch repair and tranny swap so I've made a ton of videos already on this whole subject and the more I think about it the more I wasted a lot of time and if you've got further questions I'm going to save some of that video for more in-depth answers. Here is the old, this is what the problem was. Before I attack the pedal assembly in the car I put this thing up on a jack stand and I could tell that the cable was still connected to the pedal but I couldn't not move the cross shaft arm at all and I pulled the engine out and sure enough th uh, the throat bearing was in there and it was cockeyed it was not broke off but it was cockeyed and I went ahead and tried to straighten it and it just snapped right off so all said and done it's okay this is the early style cross shaft in an IRS transmission I don't know whether I built this one or not but I I'm pretty sure uh, you know they did that in some of the transition years uh, I think they really you know late in the very late 60s someplace in there they went to the later style throat bearing and we'll look at that as soon as we get done with this now if you are using a heavy-duty pressure plate and my car has a Kennedy stage 1 pressure plate and I've just taken it off when you start going high performance and high pressure stuff and you drive it on the street easy every day and a lot day in day out you've got to expect that you're going to have some problems i don't know i've i found a Sox late model pressure plate stock and i've got it on this two liter with eight and a half to one compression light and flywheel dual weber carbs uh mild cam and it's a two liter it's, it's 78 by 90.5 those of you that know engines will know what I'm talking about 78 stroke and I think I can't remember we had some tranny issues here in the past so and it oh I know it was before I went on my trip the transmission that was in here was kind of howling and uh whatever happened to that one <laughs> I got so many things laying around but I'm starting to tag things and get better at any rate when you do that sort of stuff you might consider going with these heavy-duty cross shafts now this is a racing type cross shaft tranny for the early style I'll say swing axle but it did catch some of the early IRS as well you just have to use the right throwout bearing but there's nothing to keep it perfectly centered and I found that the center of my clutch, I'm going to have to mix some, edit some of this in there. So please be, it, the text is just going to, the, the verbal part not going to match up with what I'm telling you now. Because <laughs> uh, it just won't. Everything was off center and wobbling. And here's the throw bearing that was in there. And it was very dry and coming apart and I think I was doing a little shaking because all the time that you sit at stoplights around here and in traffic so what I decided to do rather than put the race cross shaft in there it was just 
Oh, I pulled it off. I got that son of a gun apart while it was in the car. And anybody that's ever tempted that will tell you that is one mother. It's possible. I did it. But there's no way I was going to try to put that in the car. You want to do that job once and you want it to be sure that it's done right. <laughs> this is a pain in the neck. And the more I started looking around and then I found this pressure plate and this is the transmission I picked up at the swap meet a few years ago. I think I've titled that video uh, Swap Meet Tranny and we looked inside it was a 412 from what we could see from the oil holes it all looked good I cleaned it up this is the way she sits I had robbed some parts off of it but I've got got it together now and it's a lot easier to put oil in right now which I did made a mess doing it but this has got the newer style throw bearing and this sleeve really does so much more to benefit keeping that throw up bearing centered on there and avoiding problems and issues now nothing matter with the early style but when you start putting those Kennedy pressure plates in there and driving it every day it can lead to problems so um, not saying there's anything the matter with it but I really like this setup and that's what we're going with so I'm about to throw this thing back in because I had to take that one out and it's not that hard it's a pain in the neck but you know when you're dealing with dirty greasy grimy stuff it's a lot harder I did not get a chance to stop by the car wash because I wasn't looking forward to this I it was it came up suddenly um, luckily it was close to home but I think what happened is the the cross shaft here may have moved something moved in there one of these things bent something happened I can't remember exactly what it was and I'd have to I bet I did something on my videos I had problems with a throat bearing in one of my cars and it it flipped off but that thing's got to be centered on your pressure plate especially when you're you know sitting at long stoplights so okay I guess I'll just uh I'm not going to film the whole thing, but you can <laughs> you can watch me suffer through the initial strike here, okay? And uh, the more you take apart on that thing, the easier it is. And the starting motor had to come off. Everything had to come off. I'm putting my gloves on here. I'm out of, out of view, but uh, I'm coming. I'm a coming. I'm a coming, Mr. Dillon. You youngsters probably don't even know what I just said. If you, uh, if you're an old timer, you remember gun smoke. Yeah. Oh, I just saw a problem. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. It's not the end of the world, but it is a problem. You know, my powers of observation just absolutely astound me. But it's always, it's always at the wrong time. Oh my god. This would have been a disaster. Let me show you. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to swap nose cones. This seal. And this. this uh, There's a sleeve bearing in there. <laughs> I didn't even look at that. Yeah, this, this has got to be pressed in. And this is seal. And the oil will just come pouring out of that thing. You get this thing in service. And... Uh, It'll be a total mess, let me tell you. This is the top, and this is a vent hole, and and uh, that you would expect, but uh, I think I'm gonna have to take, I'll probably just take the nose cone off of that one that I just took out of the car. I thought I'd save some time here. So much for thinking, huh? All right, well, <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> Better finding it now than... Oh, yeah, that wouldn't have shifted right... This is... This is total shit. Man, I hope the rest of this... Isn't... Isn't bad. <laughs> I think I got a gasket for the nose cone. But that's, uh... So good that I found that. Or noticed it. Yeah. I would have noticed it after I got everything in here. 
and then you're down in the tunnel putting on the shift coupling and you say, oh shit, this isn't right. I'm surprised oil didn't come out when I was filling it. I guess it's below the, it's above the plug. Yeah. Now I'm having bad feelings about that transmission wherein I did have good ones. And I thought, well, I'll just take the nose cone off of this one that I just took out of the car. And I remember being underneath there and, and uh, trying to think to myself, well, should I take it off at the tranny or should I take it off at the frame? Well, I took it off at the frame, obviously, and I never touched these nuts. And I must be the luckiest dog that ever walked because uh, I grabbed hold of this thing and look at I, I went to take the... I didn't even notice it. I've been moving it around, but I went to take that thing off and these holes are all wobbled out. Which can happen, especially if uh, you got a solid mount uh, transmission set up. This is real common on the sand rails and stuff. And so I don't want to use this one. And this does have a pretty good bearing and bushing up there. Uh, I don't have the means to sleeve this. And in a road car, you know, I don't want to be going down there every week and tightening up. And I didn't notice it rattling in the car. And this would be a good maintenance check since we're in the springtime here. Something to look at in your car, you know. Get your wrenches and get down around there. You want to go to the car wash. All this stuff, that, all this grime and stuff that's on here is normal. It's just part of having a Volkswagen. Everything weeps and leaks. And if you use uh, synthetic oil and stuff in it, it'll probably be worse. You, uh, these uh, reverse light switches uh, are a real common leaking, just like your oil sending unit on the engine. And uh, if you do a, a lot of off-roading, you know, these seals do uh, leak a little bit. And when you're, you know, you know what we do off-road. We're going down steep hills and things like that. And it, it puts more stress makes all your seals work and you can see this is one of the reasons why i decided to pull this tranny not only was that cross shaft uh a mess but uh this has been leaking for a while and it's just you know it's better to take the transmission out of the car to try to do any of this stuff with it in the car and you just it's so much easier to take an irs out than a swing axle i know this wing axle you got to deal with the brakes and all that stuff and yeah these that's this is the very reason why most mechanics out there that weren't Volkswagen mechanics hated these things because they didn't know what a tight puzzle this thing was you sometimes you just can't do things without completely disassembling things and just like engine work taking the fan shrouds and just things that appear to be simple become more complex and you have to do it in a sort in certain order. There's a few shortcuts that you can take, but when your car's your engine's in a, a standard sedan engine compartment like that, it's that's the worst. And I'd say this would be the next least difficult thing to work on. Then the fiberglass car, and of course, when you got yourself a sand rail everything's accessible but you still get in that dilemma where you're still having to take way more apart to get to a problem so i think i've gone through this nose cone thing recently i i'll look I th i've got some three hole they made these with in the later ones with three holes and that's not going to work with this setup it's it's a completely different mount there on the torsion bar this is 69 so I'm going to have to uh, find something to rub off something else. Gosh, I can't remember. No sense thinking with the camera on. Talk to you later. <laughs> hey, hey, you're back in the garage with Easy Jeezy. And we're having clutch mania going on here. A lot of things to share with you today. Here's the villain, my two liter. And everybody says they want a little more power and they want a big engine. Some people do. I've just found out from my recent build that there's a lot of people interested in a smaller engine like a 1776 and so forth. And, and I've had many of them over the years. Now, 
here is a Kennedy stage one clutch and you'll you'll see that the surface here that the throwout bearing makes contact with is a little rough and again you're seeing this red stuff all around in here and I'm not sure where that came from but look at this this is shot this is no good it doesn't spin but all this play means that it's off-center this has got to be perfectly centered and it should be snug it shouldn't be doing this and that's probably what finished off the clutch release arm that throw out bearing just couldn't keep up with the chatter and it, it, if it's not centered then there's a lot of things involved here and you've got a higher pressure plate and more horsepower going through these things things have got to center up right and when you're sitting on a stoplight and you're pushing in with that throw out bearing you're putting pressure on the back of your crankshaft that whole flywheel and everything is moving in and you've got some oil back there you've got your thrust bearing on the engine back there you're putting pressure on the crankshaft you're putting pressure on all that so you sitting that in traffic with a high performance clutch setup be aware that there could be evil things happening there it and you know that's just the way it is but the stock setup wasn't perfect either even today as they manufacture cars you go by any car dealership and the service departments always busy here's the difference you'll see that it's got the three bolts over here and what that does is holds this sleeve in place and then your uh, throw out bearing goes on here and that sleeve helps keep that throw out bearing centered and that will prevent that wear on the Kennedy clutch now that's an expensive pressure plate on that Kennedy setup and it's balanced to that engine but I don't know I wouldn't use that old setup the early setup with that I'll look at the fingers and see how everything looks underneath that will do that together but I think it'd be better to change out the transmission to the late style I don't want to drill into here and try to tap these holes I don't think I can get it centered perfectly without a jig and that's the key to making all this stuff live if this stuff this is this is pretty snug I mean on the sleeve so it takes a lot of pressure off everything else here and it's a little bit less problematic and probably better for a higher horsepower the racers you know these didn't come out until the IRS trannies came out and there are many IRS transmissions like the one that's in the car now that did not have this newer style throwout bearing setup I'm really tempted to put some new axle seals I know I got a coffee can around here with some flanges in it <laughs> it's a lot of work to change a transmission but I'm kind of curious as to whether this thing's good or not it looked good it had oil in it the guy I bought it from says it was running when we took it out of the car and it was some sort of an off-road because I saw the engine that somebody else bought from it and I had to it seems to me I had I robbed a seal out of one of these sides I know we opened it up to to see what the ring and pinion the gear ratio was and it's a 412 but this thing's pretty much ready to go in that regard so I had to go and dig up all my clutches so I thought I'd talk a little bit about these pressure plates and clutches and share some of my experience with you. um I don't know why I saved this box but this is like a $40 pressure plate it's, it's one of the 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 aftermarket ones is pretty cheap says made in China and it's they're not very good uh, if you can if you can at all afford it this looks to me to be a heavy-duty bus pressure plate because it's got these type of coil springs and that's what I remember them using in in buses my son was into the buses he was into the Volkswagen scene so I accumulated his stuff and have seen a lot of stuff besides the off-road stuff that I began with here's a solid uh, disc and 
I call these a cush lock without the spring, a solid clutch disc. And that's about as aggressive as you need to go with high horsepower. It's better to have something that slips because you transmit all that shock to your transmission and that's why you, you have breakage. This is, uh, this is probably the pressure plate I'm going to use. This is a Sox clutch pressure plate. And this is top of the line stuff. And it would just be considered heavy duty. I do not know if it'll hold the power of my two liter. This is, uh, I, I'm never, I'm never going to make claims as to what kind of horsepower I have because I have no way of measuring it or proving it. I know that it gets with the program. It's a uh, stroked 78 by 90.5, eight and a half to one compression, Jeanberg 42 specials, a very mild cam in it. It's a, it's a low grunt type cam and it'll, it'll get with the program and you know a stock clutch you know it just depends you know I think they'll they'll we'll find out I'm gonna put it on <laughs> I'm gonna, this is the this is the pressure plate that I'm gonna run now here's another one this is a different brand this may be this may be the one that came from China I don't see any writing on it and it just this may be the one that came in that box and I tried it out and it just was kind of chattery and I didn't really like it for some reason um, here is a uh, more of a aggressive uh, and you can see where it's worn clear down to the grooves why I keep this stuff I do not know I I used to carry this stuff in my trailer carry it to the sand dunes with me it'd be an emergency you're only out there for a couple of weeks the sand rails are easier to work on everybody has problems including yourself and so you just carry stuff and some of it's the loner to help other people when well, it's back up for your own stuff so another solid disc I don't have any of the stock spring style here would be an example of uh, a little fresher cush lock type disc and they're not that aggressive, I don't think. Um, this is this was nasty. <laughs> I remember this one. I had this uh, this on my Pinto buggy, and man, this was an in-out clutch. This was like a light switch. This isn't really what you consider a puck clutch. I used to have a a big uh, three-armed puck disc, and that thing was nasty too. It was so hard to get it on the trailer. And drive it slow I mean you you take off and that thing was going and drag race clutches and stuff that's what they're for they're taken to the track I mean you can get by with them but to have something like that in a daily driver just sucks it absolutely sucks now here's a uh, Brazilian made one armor Tex, um, and it's got some uh, it says right on here industrial Brazil this would be a good clutch and I don't see that it's all all grooved up you you could take uh, I always take brake clean and spray that stuff down before I install it just to get any type of oil residue off of that type of a thing but this would be another option I'll go with the socks over the stock this would be well the socks was stock too but uh, I'm gonna go with go with that one but this one would be a good a good backup now you can look at the number of arms in here this, these are called diaphragm clutches and you can see the length of the fingers and the thickness of the fingers that kind of uh, affects the strength here's an old school uh, it says F and S on it and some people might recognize them <laughs> this is a pretty aggressive diaphragm style clutch and they reinforce the plate by putting these solid pieces in here this is old school this is probably before Kennedy became popular and uh, that's a that's a strong pressure plate but again like I'm saying do you really need that and this has been in a sand car it's pretty grooved up that sand does all kinds of nasty things but this uh, this looks like to me it would be reusable and many times these cones 
uh, like the center section on it. Well, here's just some more examples of the same thing. So you're not missing anything. Many times, in the early days, when you'd buy a, a Kennedy clutch, they just offered it the one way. They all came this way. And there was a, a spring, a kind of a loop coil spring on the back. When I take this off, we'll look at it. And you could remove this or put it in, depending on what year you had. You could request it either way. But then all of a sudden, they didn't have them. And I don't think this has got it in there either. I can, I think you could feel it. Maybe it was on the outside. We'll take a look at it here, and I think that's the next thing we'll do is take this pressure plate off. Although, I've got to change out a transmission, so it really doesn't make any difference. I've got some work ahead of me. I've got at least four hours. Okay, guys, a couple things I wanted to show you. We've got the pressure plate off, and yeah, look at that. I ran a, uh, a spring center hub on this high horsepower thing, and uh, it's still tight. The center section still tight, and it looks like it's wearing nice and smooth. Everything's happy, so we might just continue with that, and uh, it looks, you can if you can look in there, there is a clock, there is a little spring, this flat spring. I'll be able to lift that back and out and take this whole center section out. There it is. So you take that off and don't lose that because you may run into one of these where you have a different transmission and this center cone section comes off and uh, boy this this just has been shaking and rattling I can see it now there's a actually a little I don't know if the light shows it of it it's actually this is junk or groove in it but you know I'll keep it just because I'm a, <laughs> that's what I do. I, <laughs> if teaching purposes, somebody comes over and says, hey, have you got one of these? And it's like, that's the one I'll give them. If they want to use it, that's up to them. But this part will engage just fine with the, uh, the new style throwout bearing. It'll be this will be, um, actually it's on the other side, so if you look, if you look at it through this, that's what you'll be seeing, and it lines up and engages, boy, just barely, but it does, does make it and engages with those little fingers. This is, this is a, a big upgrade from the old system especially on a daily driver like this so I think I think that's gonna be just dandy the way to go so when you have these balance clutches they always give you a marks you know they'll either punch it or they'll put paint marks on it and so on and so forth with these balance things so be sure if you do have a balance setup to put it on the way you, you took it off there you go Everybody knows how to put a, a pressure plate back on. There's no sense using up more time for that. And I've even made videos on it too. Just you clutch alignment tool. Nothing better than an old broken main shaft. <laughs> Sad but true. Sad but true. In my case, I'll just... Probably not even in the viewfinder area. Yeah, I guess I did realign you. So just a matter of putting it back together. I gotta sit down. It's gonna be a long day. <laughs> Forget that. <laughs> oh yeah. You know it's amazing. It's exactly the same transmission gearing that was in it before, but I've got that um, 
socks, pressure plate. You could drive this thing with your slippers on and it wasn't that way before. And it seems like any change you make at all, you gotta go out and test it. You gotta go for a drive, you know? You wash the windows and it's like, yeah, that's so much better. Ah, uh, let's go take it for a drive. And I haven't been up to the mountains yet or enough. This is one steep hill, let me tell you. It'll run away from me at third. But the transmission is doing everything it's supposed to do. It's staying in gear when you unload it. It doesn't jump out of gear in any of them. It's uh, crunchy like all. Second, third gear seems like any transmission I've ever come across. They just get used so much because you're shifting all the time between those two gears. It seems like that's where you spend most of your time. And it just wears out the synchros and the slider hook. So it's, it was a good swap. Didn't see any oil under it this morning. So the short driving that I did yesterday, I probably did 25, 30 miles. But this is the this is the the run to really warm up the transmission and get the uh, clutch familiar with the new pressure plate and all that sort of stuff and you know I've described many times what this two liter engine is and it's doing just fine with a stock clutch and actually the spring style disc I think it's just easier on the whole operating system well, that's that's just me and it just makes it more comfortable and I've got that super quiet muffler on here. Only thing I really hear is carburetor noise. And it's just soft enough. It makes a big difference as far as, you know, it's, it's not rowdy. It's smooth. It has a nice, strong bottom end and mid-range. It's a nice combination. We're running, still got the 235. 70 15 street tires on it and it just yeah I know I crossed the line on that one I do that a lot on mountain roads it's just why wear out your tires you can on, on a blind corner I'd never do that but on an open corner man I used to take my Harley down this road oh I have fun with that he just kind of straighten out the turns. It doesn't matter. I, I don't understand how some people and rules and laws, they, it's a guideline. It's a general uh, thing. You see a, a speed limit sign up here and it'll be yellow and it'll sh show curve 20 miles an hour. That's a yellow caution sign. If you've got a, overloaded vehicle or something that's a slug that's maybe what you you know you need that information but it's the white speed limit signs that is the actual speed limit and it could be 40 you know they're cautioning you there's a corner coming up and you know some people just think they gotta go exactly the speed limit you know I've got my sure tickets over the years but uh, to me it's you know <laughs> doesn't even need to be there I'm not gonna drive too crazy you want to you generally the way I drive in any vehicle is you pick the gear that's correct for the circumstance and the power range of your engine and that's where you you keep it like on a road like this you don't want to be shifting all the time you pick a gear third gear and and you say okay this is this is I can slow down for turns, but I don't have to downshift, and it'll pull away because it matches the torque of the engine. And uh, I can't believe how many newbies come out to Colorado and they they're on the brakes every time they come to a corner. The brake lights are on. They're not putting pressure on their brakes. 
but they're just getting ready to because they just have no idea. They don't make these roads, uh, you know, generally as a rule, they make them so big trucks and things can go down them. They're gentle. Now here's a bit of a hill. Boy, it's so nice to see stuff green. But this engine, see, it, it, it picks up. If you step down on the gas hard and your engine RPM doesn't start accelerating, there's no point in burying it. That's how you get detonation. I don't know why I'm rambling again. I'm just having a good time on a nice day. You don't want to lug your engine. You don't want to bury it. That's where you make the heat. You're dumping all that fuel in there and you're working it really hard. Then you come to a downhill like this, it's no sense jumping into fourth gear. Leave it third, let it spin. That'll cool it back down. It's turning that fan. What a beautiful day. And I did bring my fishing pole and I did renew my fishing license. And no, I'm not climbing down that. I don't know how to fish that kind of water. That's too, too fast. I just like the sound. And the smell. Hey, hey, you're up in the mountains with Easy Jeezy.
wind blowing in the trees. Remember when we left all the sky was blue, now it's clouding up. It's about, just about noon. It's one of my favorite lakes. I haven't been up here with the kayak. I'm just too lazy to get my fishing pole out. <laughs> There's a few people along the shore. Kind of windy though. Well, the clutch is doing great. The transmission is no worse or better than the last one. And I appreciate y'all coming along. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy out.